Great. <laughs> For this last chunk, we're going to show you how we do. In a group session, I usually do part nine or part ten. It's very hard to get to both, and I don't even try. So to, I'm going to show you part nine, and we would not. We would. This would be the last step in the lesson for today, and the next session we would do. We would end with part ten. Okay. As you can see, Rose is showing part nine, so that you see. Beautiful. Okay. Go ahead and put the sign down. So this story, this group's actually already done this story, but it gives you a nice visual of what everything looks like um, when you're done. So if you want to zoom in on, let's choose. Let's choose roses for right now. Is this nice and chunked? So the first thing we do is. This would not, this would be blank. And the first thing we would do is have them chunk it. So draw little arrows or little lines and you can look to see how people have chunked it differently. One, two, three, four, five by paragraph. So some people draw like little scoops. Um, come look at Jeremiah's too, so you have a different example. Or Maddie's, she has lines. But they chunk it into paragraphs. This is helpful for the brain because it's less overwhelming to take one paragraph at a time. Then, after we've chunked it, we're gonna read the title out loud together. The title is The Best Lunch. Okay, we're gonna create some background knowledge about the best lunch. Who can think of a quick, delicious lunch? Go, best lunch you've had recently, Maddie? Uh, mm, <coughs> Sloppy Joe's. Sloppy Joe's, best lunch you've had recently? Uh, um, hot hamburgers. Ooh, hamburgers, yeah, you're making me happy. Happy? Oh. Pancakes. Pancakes, ooh, that's mm. a good lunch. Jeremiah? Uh, I, um, it's hot dogs. Hot dogs, last one, Caesar. Chipotle burrito. Uh, oh, okay, I can't Cereal. do it. Cereal. Oh, I don't agree with that one, but to each his own. All right, so we build quick background knowledge on the best lunch. What do we think this story is going to be about? A lot. Some stuff. yummy food, right? Some yummy food. So you guys are going to read the first paragraph in your head silently. When you think you know who or what it's mostly about, I'm going to give you a sticky note, and you are going to draw a quick picture. And you, as you can see, they've already done this. So I would have given them a blank sticky note, one second, and say when you think you have a who or what this is mostly about and what's happening to the who or what, you're going to draw a quick sketch on the sticky note and leave it right next to that paragraph. Okay? We're going to do that through the whole story. So they end with having all these pictures. If you want to come look at Rose, instead of sticky notes, she drew a comic strip. Either one is fine. <laughs> also, you can see here Nyang added some narrative to her pictures, which is also awesome. For students who are maybe ready for that, that can be something that can be like a, a stretch or extension um, while you, other kiddos are still working on their pictures. Okay, once we have a general idea of the story, we're gonna have a quick conversation. We use this graphic organizer, sorry, now I'm gonna rip it out, at Redwood. Who or what is it mostly about? We always start with the who or what. So do you guys remember the last lunch? Yes. yes. Okay, uh, who or what is the, <laughs> Alan, her dad, and her who? Yeah. Ellen, Ellen, her dad, and her mom. So we have three main characters, Ellen, her dad, and her mom. What happens to the who or what? What happens, Maddie? Appreciate the hands. Mom is so busy, they want to make mom a lunch, so Ellen and dad get together and put mom a lunch. Oh, that's so sweet. Mom's busy, they want to make her a lunch, they get together, they make a lunch. What do they make for lunch? Shrimp salad. Shrimp salad and, and black plum muffin. All no. funny okay. words that they picked because well, because they fit with the skill that you're reading, right? Like shrimp salad and it's kind of funny. But yes, they make this delicious lunch for mom. So now we are going to fill in this graphic organizer. We've had a quick convo about it. So who or what is this mostly about? Everybody writes, mom, dad, Ellen. Let's say you don't know how to spell Ellen. Well, it's in the story. But let's say there's a word in here that you don't know how to spell. Who can we use to help us? Siri. Well, not Siri. Siri, Siri. Siri is better than Hello, my teacher. Siri. Jeremiah, thank you so much because Siri pushes them to independence. So for these kids, a lot of them have their phone, their own phones. They can pop their phone out, use Siri to spell a word. Or they can borrow an iPad if they don't have a phone. So they fill in who or what it's mostly about, then they write what's happening. And these are not full sentences, they're just notes, but they're actually writing something down. And then they fill in the where, when, and why as needed, if there's more detail. So where at home, when, when mom is busy, why, because mom needs a break. All right? Then they flip the graphic organizer over and then we write a whole main idea sentence. Okay, so we have the conversation now and now they're actually ready to write a main idea sentence. I do, they, they do have them use that same proofreading checklist, if we have time, to check the sentence and use Siri so that by the time I get to them, the sentence is perfect. Yes, did I miss anything? No. And then we will read the story. After we've done all this work, then we'll practice reading the story out loud for fluency. As you can see, come look, um, these are scooped. So 
over the course of many days, we'll come back to this story, maybe scoop this story, or that's something they could do at home for homework, or if you have time, which rarely happens that you have extra time, but if you do, you can scoop it to practice that meaningful phrasing. Um, okay, that's it.